Tag TV and Tag Radio, be seen and heard by both technology users and technology producers throughout the state of Georgia and around the world. Low cost, big benefits, powerhouse online branded video and audio has arrived. Tag TV, Tag Radio, there's a lot more to know. Your organization has been hit by a cyber attack. What do you do now? How do you react? What are the impacts on your customers, your reputation, your shareholders? Just what are your liabilities? Greetings, everyone. It's Tuesday, February 4, 2014, and this is Tech Talk with Technology Association of Georgia President Tino Mantella. I'm your guest host, Frank Baia. The TAG 2014 Cybersecurity Simulation, it's a one-of-a-kind learning and entertainment experience you cannot afford, or better said, cannot risk missing. Held at the Georgia National Guard Joint Forces Headquarters, C-level senior management and practitioners will come together with a limited number of attending spectators to repel attacks on a fictional company, all played out in a unique live simulation. Find out more as we tech talk with Jim Cavanaugh, the founder of Cyber Exercises, a TAG learning partner and goal sponsor. Jim is heavily involved in the planning and execution of the cybersecurity simulation, an annual InfoSec Society premiere event. This edition of Tech Talk is brought to you by Globalspeak.com, new media consultants, corporate video and audio communications, video and audio production and distribution, live and virtual event production. Tag TV and Tag Radio is a service of Globalspeak.com, creatively delivering powerful marketing, video, and audio solutions. Jim, welcome to Tech Talk. Well, it's good to be here. Well, actually, I should say it's good to be back here. Well, you know, things continue to progress. Now the term cyber criminals and terrorists and business interests, they almost seem to be in the same subject, and you wouldn't think they'd all go together. So I think we've got a lot of exciting information to share with our listeners. Um, let's start out by talking about cybersecurity itself and how has it become just in the last uh, several months since the last time we enjoyed our conversation, really mainstream business? Well, I think a lot of it uh, really can uh, be credited to the president. Uh, in his 2013 State of the Union address, the president said that cybersecurity is the uh, future of business prosperity in America, mm -hmm. and uh, those of us in the security area have known that for quite some time. But to have the uh, president of the United States tell everybody in a State of the Union address uh, – that's uh, quite uh, quite a direction for everyone. You know, I think uh, from uh, a general uh, um, individual standpoint, um, there's so much information, so much technology, so many changes that are happening that, you know, some of this stuff just kind of becomes hyperbole. Then something like the Target situation happens where it hits you right in the pocketbook and you begin to realize, wait a minute, when they talk about terrorism or they talk about the cyber criminals that can happen to a company, it just happened to me. They stole my information. You know, uh, let's talk a little bit about the overlap between general business interest and cyber criminals and terrorism. Well, I think the one thing that people don't really realize, and especially business people, is that, uh, yes, it is sort of a technical thing. It's, it's uh, one of those uh, areas that, you know, it does take specialists, it does take technicians and engineers and that sort of thing. But really, uh, the cyber criminality, cyber terrorism that we see is effectively just an electronic version of what people have been doing for centuries. Uh, the lying and stealing, cheating, you know, all the different things uh, have been around a very long time. They've just figured out how to automate it. So somebody in uh, Pakistan can reach into your pocket here in Atlanta, Georgia, and take some money from you or can take money out of your, your bank account, that sort of thing. But uh, really, uh, what we've seen is a lot of trends that uh, are starting to come uh, to fruition, and one of those trends is that we are all targets, both as businesses and individually. And we've seen that uh, really just in the last couple of years, where I think uh, you and I both and all of the, uh, the listeners, all the TAG members, uh, can probably think about all of the uh, uh, emails they get from not their bank and all of the emails they get about free vacations and uh, all of the different things that they get that, uh, you know, risk uh, uh, really giving up their personal information sure. or financial information. If any more uh, generals phenomenal. or any more uh, former presidents uh, 
want to give me any million to ten million dollars if I just give him my social security number. <laughs> either for foreign uh either former presidents of the US or former presidents of Nigeria. You're I, exactly right. I keep trying to figure out what list I'm on. I mean it, it, this has been years of this stuff. And then you know what's so funny is that somebody told me once that, that if you you can't win a lottery if you haven't ever uh, entered one. You know, so you you think to yourself when you see the the line you just won in the lottery a million dollars and you just think Maybe this is really true. And then that line comes to mind that says, I never entered a lottery. How could I win a lottery I haven't entered? Well, let's talk about that for just a minute. Uh, the targets are becoming more and more sophisticated, uh, more targeted. Uh, as an example, just you know, maybe three, four years ago, uh, we'd get sort of a, a blanket attack, and it would be based upon, uh, you know, certainly if you send out a email to 10, or 10 million people and you say, uh, attention, uh, you know, customers of so-and-so bank, your bank accounts uh, at risk or whatever, you're going to have some hits. It's going to happen. But what has, is uh, the, the, the change uh, that it's, uh, we're seeing is that uh, instead of 10 million random people, those are uh, being sent to 1 million people that are the customers of XYZ Bank. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there's a, a, you know, nobody's saying, well, gee, I wasn't, you know, I've never entered a lottery, I can't win one. They say, wait a minute, my account with XYZ Bank is at risk. Well, you know, I need to do something about yeah, that. Yeah. And a lot of times that email will contain personal information. It might even contain the bank account number. Call us immediately about bank account number so and so because it's a risk. And again, you know, uh very personal and uh potentially very accurate. And of course they don't think about the fact that their bank has told them we never send emails. We send an email that says you've got something in your private email uh, account at the bank or something, but you know they're worried, they're concerned. They see a real uh, bank account number, real information. They call it 800 number. Before you know it, they're talking to Peggy and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it, you, bring up, you really bring up an interesting point, though, from the negative side of the human nature aspect, stealing and all of the things that you were talking about. The other side of human nature is the idea that it's if it, you know, that if you if it's too good to be true, it probably is. But yet you still just don't want to believe it. You just want to believe that it is true. Like, can you can you really insure yourself? I mean, can we just insure ourselves like any business loss from uh, a, a cybersecurity problem? Well, I, I'll be very honest with you. The the idea of cybersecurity becoming a more mainstream type of a business process does carry insurance with it. And uh, you go from a uh, organization that is extremely secure and really has uh, a very good uh, insurance policy, very good rates, because they are unlikely to be the target, all the way to something I heard the other day I really uh, I, I kind of halfway laugh at and halfway gasp at. Um, one of the executives, one of my clients asked me, uh, what I think a one million dollar insurance policy costs for them, and you, you have to understand, I can't say the name of the company because their security is like Swiss cheese. It's it's terrible. Uh -huh. And I said, gee, I, I have no idea. And they said, well, a one million dollar uh, policy costs us about a million dollars. And I said, well, what's the point? You know, well, there isn't for them any point. But for the uh, organizations that are more secure, that have good defenses, that are protected more. There's still a risk, but the risk is much smaller. It is a uh, a risk that we can define. We can say, you know, as, as well as you could with any type of risk, uh, what the range is, and it's insurable. And it's insurable for a fraction of what the actual loss loss would be if they have a loss. Now, I, I'm going to guess that every business needs to accept the reality that they're at risk. They're at some form of risk. You mentioned that the security of this particular client was like Swiss cheese. I, I, they probably didn't know that or didn't realize it or, or would be willing to accept it, so they go on there every day until something actually happens. I guess part of my question is is that should a business owner, should a uh, an executive automatically assume that whatever they're doing, it's probably not enough, that they ought to look at having, you know, because I, I guess I'm, one of the things I'm, I'm leading into is I really want to talk to you about the uh, cybersecurity simu simu simulation, simulation, I can say that, um, because I think it's a great opportunity for those people who aren't familiar with the problem to look at something and see it in, in a, in a uh, simulation that may wake them up from the reality that they're not necessarily secure. But let's start with the idea of uh, do you automatically assume that enough is not enough? 
Well, one of the things that I, I guess is probably very disappointing to the uh, to the clients, and and uh, something that you know I've heard a lot of comments about, uh, is that I'm I'm very realistic, and I'll, I'll tell you one situation I was in uh, where they were doing I guess what we, we call the final interviews, you know, your best and final offer, and uh, I went in right after a former U.S. general, U.S. Army general, that was going to find the bad guys and get them in their holes and, you know, do this and that and the other thing and rat them out and, you know, it was really uh, apparently a very arousing speech and he eventually, he and his organization got hired. I didn't because I came in right after him uh, to the board and I told him that our objective was to stay one step behind the bad guys and if we could do that, you know, we would do as well as we could possibly do. Well, they didn't want to hear that. Yeah. Uh, one step behind the bad guys, that means they're still able to steal from us. They're still able to do this and that and the other thing. They're still able to uh, exfiltrate our intellectual property. They're, you know, Yes, they can because the criminals, for the most part, the really good criminals, are really good. And you don't see pictures of them. You don't see them being let out in handcuffs and things. Those are the, you know, the, the, the people that I guess they thought they were smart enough. But uh, that's a very, very intelligent group of people we're dealing with, and if we can stay only one step behind them, we are uh, doing well. The the people I feel worse for are the organizations and the individuals that actually have a problem but don't know it. Mm-hmm. Uh, they might have their uh, their intellectual property exfiltrated for uh, six months, a year, whatever, and be told, you know, maybe by the FBI, we found your information as part of another investigation. We uncovered that. There's a there's a radio commercial these days that yep. says uh, John so and so was called by the police because his information was on a hacker's computer. Well, that happens a lot, and it's it's a matter of just not realizing the exposure that you've got individually and as a business. So on one side, you you have to assume that uh, everything is at risk to a degree. On the other side, there's also the false security of thinking that hyperbolistically you've got it all covered and everything's protected. I mean, where do you find you where do you find the middle ground? What do you do? you know? I guess uh, it's a trusted uh, vendor, or someone that you know and understands, sees it for the reality that it is, and faces the truth and gives me the facts. I mean, it sounds obvious, but I think in this particular case, it's such a specialty that I'm going to assume that most company executives, and certainly some of the major organizations, but most of them can't be that broad of a generalist to have this kind of comprehension to be able to know that I'm even in trouble and I need the help. I mean, is it something that you would advise people to almost do it like on a regular basis to kind of even check and balance the people that they're already working with? Oh, absolutely. And I think that probably the, the, the best short answer is this. When I go into a company, um, unlike you know a quote salesperson, I'm an engineer. I'm a I'm a security practitioner, so I ask questions. And one of the questions I ask uh, a CEO or uh, some executive, I say, "Do you read your balance statement? Do you read your annual report?" Mm-hmm. And the answer occasionally is, "Well, no. I got people that do that for me." In which case, I just thank, thank them for their time and leave. But if they read their balance statement, if they care enough about their business to to know, uh, you know, their their profit and loss and whatever, then they need to develop cybersecurity awareness and cybersecurity understanding as a business skill. Hmm. They don't need to sit down and set up a firewall or build out a router securely or whatever, but they do need to know the general trends. Uh, they need to know that their policies are sound. They need to know that their uh, you know that they have insurance against certain types of loss that they're unlikely to have other kinds of loss, which is another problem uh, a lot of times you know a good insurance salesman will you know sell you on uh you know incredible coverage for your car, but you don't drive much and maybe they don't sell insurance for your home, so your home's unprotected. Mm-hmm. same thing happens with you know your security posture is trying to uh make sure you're putting your money in the right place, and a lot of the organizations feel great because they're spending a lot of money, they're not spending it the right way. They're not spending the right place. Check and then recheck. I mean, obviously. Exactly. You know. Well, one of the things that um, I really want to get into is the cybersecurity simulation. Um, it came up last year, I think. I think there were a lot of people. I know it was a great success, a lot of attendees, but I also know that there was a lot of chatter. A lot of people didn't get it, didn't understand what was going on. You know, is it relevant? Is it serious? And I think they came out the other side going, whoa, uh, we got to do this again. Tell us, our, our listeners, about the cybersecurity simulation and go into why you approached TAG originally about presenting it, the first one. That okay, was, let, I think let it me, was last February, right? Yes, absolutely. Let me, let me tell you a little bit about uh, a contrast between the two. 
The uh, last February, we had a simulated attack against an organization called the Global News Network. And it was the first time in the world that we are aware of that anyone has ever, ever had an open simulation, which means that uh, individuals without security clearances or non-disclosure agreements or something would participate. And I do know, because I was told, that a lot of the uh, sharpest uh, experts were there to watch a thing crash and burn. They were there for the carnage. Mm. And everyone learned something. Everyone became aware. The, the, the action on stage with over three dozen uh, uh, people from the sea level down uh, learning and interacting uh, with the FBI and the GBI and the vendors, it was just a phenomenal uh, event. In fact, uh, we're still... Uh, sort of parsing it and understanding things that we learned from it that we, you know, a year later uh, are just coming to understand. So it was a phenomenal event, but a lot of begging went into that, trying to explain what we're doing, begging people to help, you know, whatever. Sure, yeah. This year, no begging. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations. Oh, thank you. And we're getting a lot of phone calls from a lot of people. And I'll mention uh, that our our uh, last year. Uh, we had our uh, event at Georgia Tech, and uh, they were uh, they were great. We had uh, at the first center, but uh, Tag paid for that. They paid just what any band or any uh, you know group would have uh, for the event. This year is entirely a different game, and I'm just thrilled that our host this year is the Adjutant General of the uh, National Guard for the State of Georgia. Wow. And wow, I walked wow. into a to a meeting uh, at the Clay National Guard base uh, a week ago, and there were 16 very ready to go, very energized people there that, that would do anything to help us with the simulation because they understand uh, probably better than anybody that their joint operations center is the point that information flows back and forth between the military and the enterprise side, and they're trying to get in touch with the enterprise side, and the enterprise side is waking up to the fact that that's very valuable. So they, they see that crossover, and then we throw in uh, law enforcement, the FBI, GBI. Uh, we're going to have uh, Cobb County Police this time as well as Cobb County 911 uh, in the event. And uh, everyone realizes that this entire group is necessary to gather the intel, to, to know what the responses should be, the reaction should be on an ongoing and very dynamic basis. So uh, I, I'm very excited to see it, and uh, I'm very you know excited to be part of that that sort of uh, of, of, of a seminal event. Now, in terms of our simulation this year, uh, coming up uh, in just a very short while, we are not. And I repeat this so many times, we are not a security event. There are hundreds of events where uh, security people get together and the security people have even told us, wow, this is a great security event, Jim, you ought to do this. It's not. It is a business event. It is aimed at the sea level, the senior managers. We, we do this thing in English. Uh, we have seven different teams that are building attacks that are representative of the full spectrum of attacks that you're likely as a business to encounter at least two or three or four of. Mm. Uh, you're really unlikely as a business to, you know, to see all seven of them. God forbid. <laughs> that would ruin your day, trust me. But at least be able to see some of the, some of the things that would affect any business, even though we're focusing on something called the logistics company. Okay, so uh, give us uh, our listeners who didn't have an opportunity to attend last year. Number one, you mentioned uh, a lot of C's there. Give us some idea of the kind of people that should be coming, and and and, and what happens if I attend? Am I a, a passive participant or am I a, an audience? How does that? How do? What's the actual? Um, give me a visual of what happens when I go when I go to the event. Okay, um, as an observer. You would walk. You would. You would be bused to the Clay National Guard facility. Uh, you'd have a security escort into their uh, the drill, what they call drill hall. That's a large Pentagon-shaped room wow. uh, that's been set up just specifically for us to our specifications. And you will see 270 chairs for the observers. And you will see, um, I believe it's 42 total chairs set up on a on a stage area at tables for what are the different divisions of the logistics company. 
you will see a large uh, conference table in the down front and center where most of the action will happen. And you will see on an elevated platform a place where the attacker will explain what they have done up to the point of the attack, and then uh, the group will be able to react to it. Now, as a uh, participant, and we do still have a couple of slots open, especially at the sea level that we're uh, working to uh, sort of fill here at the last minute, you would actually sit down uh, totally unaware of what's going to happen, and at random times throughout the two-hour period of the simulation, uh, you would actually be presented with a problem uh, by the attacker, uh, someone representing the attacker team. And uh, you would have to decide, first of all, if your group or department or whatever uh, is even involved. And if you are in some way, then you would help develop an attack. I mean, a, 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 a right. kind of attack. Solution. You'd be attacked. You'd help a uh, solution. Yeah. And uh, we have embedded reporters that would report uh, what the results are. Uh, we have video feeds out uh, to a number of organizations around North America. And uh, we also have a feedback mechanism so people from the immediate audience or from Kansas City or Sacramento can uh, either tweet, email, or text message back and ask a question or give an opinion. Uh, have you checked out this? Have you thought about this? Have you guys uh, taken this into account? Whatever. So it's a just a huge experiential learning uh, environment uh, where we all pull together as uh, the logistics company for two hours and try and fend off these uh, five cyber attacks, a uh, physical attack and a uh, social engineering attack. Uh, Takeaway? If I am a C-level person, um, I will learn a lot more about the uh, importance of cybersecurity, not certainly more important than accounting, but not a whole lot less important than accounting either. It's another business function, and I will be aware of a lot of the issues that, that probably weren't put right in front of me up to this point. If I'm a senior manager, I'm going to start uh, bringing in security with everything that I do. And with a uh, if I'm a practitioner in one of these roles as a risk manager or a security engineer, I'm going to know that my management has a better appreciation of my role as part of the business as opposed to something that just has to be done. Uh, it's something that, that uh, is, is part of the overall organism, is part of the business. Well, I know, but I bet a lot of our listeners don't, who the CEO was last year of the fictional global news network that you used. Um, why don't we disclose who that was and maybe share with us what you think he learned from his experience. Well, it's not just a matter of think. Uh, I do know what he learned. <clears throat> we had a long talk about it, and uh, this gentleman we were talking about actually wrote a blog on it that can be uh, read on tag. And i I got to tell you, I was thrilled that the uh, CEO of the very first cybersecurity simulation was Tino Mantella, yeah. the uh, CEO of TAG. And uh, I think that turns a lot of heads, and, and people that maybe wrote this off as being – uh, you know, a tech weenie, uh, you know, turn your uh, propeller on kind of a thing, uh, just really realized as busy as, as Tino Mantella is that uh, it was worth his time uh, to take the briefings in advance, to learn about Global News Network, to learn uh, a lot about uh, the business itself, and then uh, be able to guide the organization through uh, basically what comes down to two terrorist attacks following a bunch of cyber attacks. It was uh, – uh, really, something that uh, you know he was able to wrap his uh, wrap his arms around and uh, really guide the organization through. In fact, I'll, I'll tell you a little a little uh, thing that I I use as a benchmark. Uh, I told the audience, uh, in all sincerity, that I, that the uh, exercise was to share knowledge and learn from each other, and that I did not think in two hours that uh, they would achieve the goal of getting their uh, digital broadcasts back on the air. In one hour and 12 minutes, uh, Tino Mantella and his team were able to get live video broadcast on the air, saving uh, Global News Network uh, literally millions of dollars and uh, just a phenomenal, uh, almost impossible thing to do. But it was a, a real tribute to Tino, uh, to the uh, FBI, GBI, 911, Fulton County, 911, uh, Fulton County, uh, or I should say Atlanta Police Department, and the uh, three dozen or so professionals on the stage, including vendors and everybody from the uh, CISO and you know COO and all those other folks on down to the security uh, practitioners, and we are hoping 
that uh, the group this year uh, can perform as well as they did last year. I, 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 you know, they've set a very high bar for this year's group. Well, we're blessed because we get to share a lot of information about events, and in a lot of cases people are simply just not aware that they're going on. Um, and every once in a while an event comes along that is a must-attend. And i got to tell you that when you talk about infotainment, when you talk about the importance of the subject and the fact that you're going to walk away with some real deliverables, but have fun doing it, have a real entertaining experience doing it, not talking about it, um, one of a kind, cybersecurity simulation. Uh, Jim, real quick, tell us uh, some of the details real quick, uh, where, when, and how do we register if we're interested in going. Uh, well, the, the best thing to do uh, for registration is probably go to www.cyberexercises, C-Y-B-E-R-E-X-E-R-C-I-S-E-S dot com slash tag 2014, www.cyberexercises dot com slash tag 2014. On every page at the very middle of the bottom, there is a uh, Army uh, or excuse me, there's a National Guard uh, logo and a registration link, and that'll take you to the registration. The event is a full-day event on the 25th of February. We start out with a three-hour morning briefing that gives a background. We then have our opening ceremonies, which uh, we will know very shortly which of the uh, state-level uh, uh, government officials will help open the ceremony with Tino and with the uh, 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 Adjutant General of the, uh, of the, of the Guard. And uh, from one, two, three, we have the exercise itself. We have a one-hour lessons learned, and then we have what we call the recovery reception, which is a chance for everybody to uh, meet and greet and talk about the activities of the day, talk about cybersecurity for business. Now, is it true that when I register, I have to give you my Social Security and my bank account number? <laughs> cybersecurity simulation. It's a, a no a no miss event. Jim, thank you for taking time to visit us today on Tech Talk. Thank you very much, and I'll take that Social Security number anytime you're ready.